Hallelujah. God is faithful. Come on, let's look at your neighbor next to you. Give them a smile. It's so good to be back together. I believe we didn't get used to just sitting home and turn on our television. But hallelujah, today our God is alive and he is risen. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful to be a part of the family of God. God is such an awesome God. I don't know what you come to do. But I just come to give him praise and give him glory and give him adoration that he did not stay in the grave. I give him praise that death could not hold him down. My God from Zion, that he has risen and is seated on the right hand of his father. And then he's still making intercession for you and I. Our God is alive, he's risen, and he is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Oh, I don't have to go to gym now for the rest of the week. Look at God. I give God praise and I give him glory. Hallelujah. I thank God for all of you that are watching, have been um, following our services. Thank you so much. I give him praise. Thank God. My God, that was a wonderful workout. I wanted to go a little longer, but you know, they used to the sun. But ah, oh, my God, from Zion, I remember I used to be in the disco and I'm going to take me off the floor until they have to shut the door. Turn off the music, then I leave. Amen. And that's what I enjoyed. And so I want to enjoy Jesus even more because he's a great God. He's an awesome God. And he's an all-time Father. Hallelujah. Just want to encourage those of you that are watching to let you know that there's always hope. And to let you know that God has not forgotten. I know we are looking at everything that is going on and feel like it seems like we're going backward instead of forward. But I know a God who is greater than all, than everything that we can do. I know God is so awesome and beside him there is none other. Hallelujah. He deserves all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I am so grateful. My God, to be with you, life changes. Look at y'all. My goodness. And we get to eat a little bit, right? Just a little bit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I want to look at Isaiah 66 and 1, and I promise you I won't be before you long. I just want to really celebrate. I am so grateful for what Jesus did for me. I was sinking so deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. And all of this shenanigans and what y'all were doing, I didn't believe in all of this. I used to laugh at it. It was funny to me. It was funny when I see people jumping up in the Holy Ghost. I used to be grinning my teeth and wondering if they had a problem or they was going through something. Or I used to ask my mama, why are you always brushing roaches off your dress? It looked like you'd be brushing roaches off your dress. And it was very funny to me because I, I, didn't, I, I didn't understand this because it, I couldn't comprehend it. I didn't know what they were feeling. So I thought that was just something they did when they felt good. You know, we go on the dance floor, you drink a little alcohol, and you feel real good. You're there for a good time. But it was not until I had my personal encounter in my room when I was there. Nobody prompted me. Nobody was telling me or pushing me on what to do. Nobody was coaching me. But as I was on the floor praying, I felt the Holy Ghost. And I know that he's real. I had my encounter. And so I know that he is alive forevermore. And I'm grateful to him. Hallelujah. I'm grateful that this is the day that the disciples waited for over two weeks in the upper room until the promise has come. I don't know about you, but I accept the promise. I accept the challenge. I accept the promise to move forward in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We can't do church as usual. We say it, but we can't really say it no more because God has shifted. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The same power now is shifting and I know that God is about to do something really awesome and something different. God have a way of just blowing the minds of humans because According to Isaiah, his words are not like our words, nor is his thoughts like our thoughts. So no matter how we try to figure it out, I don't care what you do. You can do all your hypotheses. You can go and do all of the steps and the steps that, you know, was planned, how we can find out our experiment, and you still can't understand who he is. Because he's God and God alone. He's self-existent. His intrinsic glory cannot be explained. Who he is cannot be explained. But when we get in his presence, my God from Zion, we, are, we don't understand his glory, but we know, oh my God, that something happens when we get in the presence of the Lord. I'm excited about this change. I'm excited about this new movement. I don't know about you, but I'm not dead. Hallelujah. I'm alive. And I'm giving God praise because he's a good God. It could have been worse. I could have been in my grave. I could have been in the hospital bed. But God is good. And his mercy endured forever. So I cannot afford to keep my mouth closed. Hallelujah. The streets are calling even more. And because the streets are calling, we got to answer the call. Hallelujah. God is so good. So Isaiah 61. 
everyone. You all look so wonderful, man. You all look so excited. Look like, man, like you all just couldn't wait to get into the house of the Lord. Like you all have your cornflakes and cereal and big time breakfast and everything. Isn't God wonderful? Hallelujah. He's good. Thank you, Jesus. So Isaiah 66 and 1 says, Heaven is my throne and earth is the footstool of my feet. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what place is there for my repose? I want us to know that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And his eyes are not closed and his ears are not shut up. I want us to understand that God is still yet moving. And no matter what we are going through, one thing I know about God, when the, when the children, when the people try to fight, confront or fight the children of Israel, they wax in strength and in power. They grew more in strength and in power. So I want us to know that even if the enemy turn it around for the bad, God will turn it around for our good. Are you hearing me on today? We got to understand that there's only God that can move now. And he's still moving in the affairs of men. So no need for us to be afraid. No need for us to get concerned. But we know who holds the future. Are you all hearing me on today? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all they that dwell therein. So he is not surprised by what has taken place. Understand this. We've been locked down for a minute. And now it looks like it's chaos that we're coming out. But I want you to know that God has a plan. In the midst of a storm. I believe that God will break the greatest revival that we've ever seen in the earth realm. I know God is up to something. And I trust him because my walk is not by sight. But it's by faith. I can't look at what I'm seeing. But I gotta look at what I'm seeing in the spiritual realm. Are you hearing me on today? When we tap into the spiritual realm. We know that the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want us to get to the place. When we understand the throne. And heaven is his throne. That means that there's no power greater. There's no power stronger. He is sovereign. He is God alone. And there's no one that can contend with him. There's nobody that can battle with him and win. There's nobody that can do anything. Nothing happens in this earth unless it goes through the Father. Are you hearing me on today? So our next move is to say, okay, God, what do we do? We got to begin to speak to the one who knows how to change things. We got to begin to speak to the one who knows how to fix situation. Are you hearing me on today? Yes, I see the chaos. I see all the chaos that is going on from city to city, from state to state. And I see everything that is arising up. But I know that there is a God that never fails. I know that he is still yet able. Amen. This war that we fight is not by flesh and blood. But it's by principalities and powers. And so, yes, we have the persons that who don't understand and know the things of God. They're fighting it by flesh and blood. But also, who know better, we have the fighters in the spiritual realm. And I want us to get to the place that this time, this kind come through fasting and praying. It's time for us to get on the fast and begin to pray and begin to really seek the face of God for God to do the things, to change the things that is in our lives. So if he sits, if his, earth is, if his throne is in heaven, that means he occupy a position like none other. That no one can take his place. No one can take his position in your life. So don't be distracted by what is going on. God has done something so wonderful in the earth realm while we are in this time of, of fasting, in this time of where we were praying. And so many people, things were birthed. God began to speak to us. He began to show us mighty things. He began to, I mean, we felt like there was hope. We felt the newness. We felt the refreshing. We felt like God was helping us. He is still sitting on the throne. I just stop by to let you know today that earth is his footstool. That means that he still has control. He is still walking through the earth realm and that he's still doing what he needs to do. He is all powerful, all mighty, all knowing, all seeing, and forever faithful in the things concerning the man. And so I want us to understand on today. We look at Pentecost Sunday. And one of the things that we need to do in a time like this is to be on one accord. Somebody say one accord. one accord. It was only until the disciples came on one accord. It was only when they came on one accord. When they all began to think with one thought. When they all began to think the same way. When they all began to focus on the promise. When they began to focus on that thing. When we began to focus on souls. When we begin to focus on what God has called us to do, we're going to see some awesome power and might in the earth realm. Are you all hear me on today? Because understand, the Bible says we leave lion houses and
and everything, and we follow him, he'll give us a hundred in this life and the life to come. So I want to encourage you today to let you know that God is still on the throne. He has not moved. His position has not been moved. He has not been taken over. No one has overtaken him. No one has came and brought the battle and he's moved. He is still on the throne. And because he's still on the throne, I have no need to worry. I have no need to fret because I know that God is going to do just what he said he's going to do. I know that God is going to move in the aircraft. We just got to keep watching, keep praying, keep in our faith and keep in focus because we can't afford right now to lose our focus. We can't afford to get in our feelings right now because if we get in our feelings, we're going to lose the move of God. Amen. Because when you look at it now, you start to think some things. And I can't believe you start to work, right? When you start to look at those videos, you, you start to think about when you was in the streets, what you want to do. You want to get your glove now. You want to do all kind of other stuff. But we are no longer under the, under the law. We are now under grace. And so because we are under grace, we understand that God tells us to do it. Pray for them that the spiteful use us. Bless them that curse us and love them that hate us. Because we need to understand. I was listening to the video and it was so powerful. The Hebrew children, the Israelites, they were the promised children of God. And the Bible says that when they grew in wax and stretch, the Pharaoh was jealous of them. He saw that no matter what he did, he began to oppress them. He began to put them in slavery. He taught them to do more work. He said, you know what? If we don't put get control of these people, they can fight us and take over our land. Because this Pharaoh didn't know what Joseph had done. And so what did he do? He put the people in bondage. They were slavery. But what happened? The more he oppressed them, the more they grew in power. The more they walked in power. No matter what they do, they walked in power. No matter what we do, we are waxing in power. We are waxing in strength. No matter what they did, no matter the jail cells, no matter the prison cells, we are waxing in power and we are waxing it doesn't matter what constraint. It doesn't matter what sports were created. We dominate the sports arena. Because why? When you are with God, and then God places his hand on all people. It doesn't matter the race. It doesn't matter the color. But anybody, because he's a God of vengeance, and he will repay. And so what I tell you, when God has upon you, no man can touch you. So we can understand that we are in a war. But we are not in a physical war. We are in a spiritual war. So we can't fight this by posting. You know, they say if you're silent, you're, you're, you're given consent. If you're silent, you don't care. You don't have a voice. But see, I can post a lot of posts and, and say what I feel and get a lot of likes. But that's not going to change things. But if I go into the closet and I close the door... And I speak to the one who can make the changes and I tell him and I put my post there. I know I'm going to get lots and I know I'm going to get reinforcement because there's going to be more that is with me than against them than against me. I know that he'll send the host of heaven to come to our rescue. I know when we begin to do what we are supposed to do. The Bible says the firm and effectual prayers of the righteous still avail much. And the same power that he gives the people, he gives the disciples power. He said, I give you power to trample on scorpions and serpents. We were 
recognize the strategy. He's a deceiver and he's a liar. And there's no truth in him. And he's been doing this for years and years. And so he know how to do it. So now what he wants to do is relapse and go back to the same thing. Oh my God, nothing changed. All this happening, all that praying and all the vision God showed you. Because listen to me. Some people were psyched up and ready for this release. People had their books. People had their visions. People were going to open their businesses. People were just ready to just be sold out for God. I mean, people were just excited about when they come out of this pandemic because it gave us the world a time. God paused time and we began to think and it showed us where we were and it showed us how much we needed God. I don't care. We began to think about so many different things, but I want you to say today that it is not change. It's a smoke screen. <laughs> it's a smoke screen because God is up to something greater than we can imagine. Watch in the midst of it. Watch what God will do in the next 30 days. Watch how we will see God get the glory out of this. Watch how we will see that God, there are some people that are looking in the spirit realm and they're not moved by what they see. They're not moved by what's happening. But what we're doing is we stay focused and we're staying on the cause. Line upon line and precept upon precept. God has already given us the vision and said, listen, I want you to change this and I want you to change that. I want you to do it this way because he that been his souls is wise. And I want you to know today that something great is about to happen. Something awesome is about to happen. And I know God is up to something real big. I want to encourage you. All the message and everything that you've been getting and how you've been so fired up and excited about the new move don't change. I know we get discouraged. And I know the discouraged is really good at what he does. But one thing I know about God, I can tell him anything. And he can tell me anything and I know he's going to do it. He never lies. He cannot lie. He is bound by his word. He might not do it when you want it, but I promise you, he will get it done. And if he said that he reset the world, and he said that things have changed, and he said that his presence and spirit will fall upon us, I believe him. Nobody can take that from me because I've seen what he has done. See, nobody tell me and make me love Jesus. He come and introduce himself to me. And because he introduced himself to me, that's why I am sold out. I am really, because they can explain Jesus the way. I had so many questions that I could not understand and they weren't able to explain these questions to me. But when you have an encounter with the master himself, that's why Paul was so crazy for Jesus. Because when he met Jesus, something happened. Something supernatural happened and he began to declare, I want you to hold on. Don't go back to the same old stuff. Say he wants you to reverse. But you will not reverse in the name of Jesus. We're going forward in the promises and the things of God. Satan wants you to go back and get discouraged and go back in your wallow, go back in your sorrow, begin to think about your bills, begin to think about all the things that is going on. But he is a liar, there's no truth in him. I don't know about nobody else, but I'm moving forward in the things of God. The Bible tells me that the earth is his footstool and heaven is his throne. And everybody's standing. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, and I will repay. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. And I want you to understand, God has not forgotten, and he cannot lie. He will never lie to us. With your hands lifted up, hallelujah, with that same power, that dynamis power, I want you to begin to open your mouth because you're going to begin to pray. And we're going to pray because there are not many persons that understand the power of the revelation. But as we begin to worship, I believe the worship will go in the atmosphere. And we get to move in the hearts like how it did for Saul. When David played the harp, the music caused the evil spirit to leave. And I believe as we begin to worship, the Bible said Jehoshaphat was faced with a war. But when he sent the praises ahead, my God, he didn't even have to fight that battle. So I believe today if we begin to declare and open our mouth and begin to worship the Lord. I began to just make a declaration and open our mouth and begin to tell God how much we appreciate Him. I believe our worship, our authentic praise will go up as a sweet smell and savor. I believe it will go as smoke and go from state to state. I believe, I know there are many persons all across America. I know they're praying and I know they're worshiping and I know the Bible says we're the two or three agree. Touching anything He will do it in the earth, Grandma. Hallelujah. So we touch and agree with all our brothers and sisters that are praying, that are worshiping, that are believing God, the same God, and He will move by His Spirit. He will move by his power. He will move by his anointing. There is nothing
nothing that God cannot do. He is a God that answers by fire. And so as we begin to worship, Father, we thank you today. Lord, we give you the praise. We know, God, that there's nothing, there's nothing too hard for you. God, we trust you because we thank you, Lord, because you're an amazing God. You're an amazing King, Lord. You are amazing everything, God. Father, we thank you, Lord, because we know we cannot do without you. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we will surely fail. Without you, we'll be like a ship drifting without a sail. Father, we put our trust in you, God. We thank you, Lord, God, that this day, God, is a demarcation of God of what you will do uh, in the earth realm, God. And this day, God, you will show yourself like never before. Father, I thank you, Lord God, because what you say you will do, uh, you are Jehovah. You are God Almighty. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you never, ever lose a battle. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for what you're about to do. Thank you for moving our God from cross from state to state. We thank you, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, God, that you'll bring peace, oh God, in the neighborhoods, uh, that you'll bring peace in every state. Oh God, that is riding. Father God, we thank you for your peace, Lord. It's only you that can do it, Lord. It's only you that can mission your eagles, oh God. It's only you, God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that the atmosphere is charged, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you send your best angels, oh God. Father God, to do the work, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father, that there will be peace, oh God. In the midst of it, God, you will arise, oh God. Father God, you say, Lord God, that our enemies shall be scattered, oh God. Father, we thank you today. God, that whatever you're doing, Lord, don't do it, oh God, without us in this season, God. We need your presence, God, like a cloud by day and a fire by night, oh God. Move like never before, God, across the earth, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless you, God. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, Lord. In the midst of it, Lord, souls will come to know you. We know the harvest is still right, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, Father. That you are giving and speaking to the hearts of your prophets even now, God. You're giving them strategic word. You're speaking to the hearts of your apostles, Lord. You're giving them strategic words, oh God. Father God, you're planning, oh God. Father God, as Paul was mission, oh God. You're giving the leaders, oh God, strategic plans, oh God. And strategies for such a time as this. Father God, our ears are in heaven, Lord. Because you're on your throne, God. And we kneel before you, God. Because earth is your footstool, Lord. We kneel before your throne, God. And we bow and worship in adoration to you, God. Knowing that you are going to do what you say. Knowing that you are going to make a way, Lord. Father, we leave it in your hands. Have your way, Lord. Lord, we will start on the watch. And we will see what you will do. We have written the vision, God. We have rewrote our visions. And we have made it plain. Father, we thank you. Because we know, God, that nothing happens on this earth unless you allow it. And so, God, we trust you. Even when we don't understand, we trust you, Lord. More than ever before, Lord. Help us as your church to be one, even as you and the Father are one. We thank you that you remove every opposing power, contrary spirit, spirit of disunity, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, you remove, oh God, all barriers in the name of Jesus. Remove the scales, oh God, of our eyes, oh God, and help us, Lord, to be one. You pray this prayer, Lord, that we be one, as you and the Father are one. Help us to speak with one voice and one mouth, but according to your Holy Spirit. Father, we are so grateful. And we give you thanks, Lord. And we give you the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Listen, if you do not know the Lord and you're listening to this broadcast, and you know, you might say, I don't know. And I know a lot of persons are concerned for their children and concerned for their sons. But the one who holds the future in our hands, he is not a deceiver and he's all powerful. I want you to know something. That when we put our trust in God, He will never fail us. He said, if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, we can say to any mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and it shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain has been removed in the name of Jesus. And so we give Him praise. If you do not know the Lord, and that's something you say, I want to get to know it for myself. I hear what everybody else is saying. But you're telling me that I can have a personal relationship with him. If that's you and you on the line this morning and you're listening to us by social media, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner in need of your grace.
come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior. Holy Spirit, teach me to follow Jesus from this day forth. In Jesus' name we pray. If you've said that prayer, we don't want you to just be a dead by yourself because we know the deceiver. We know that he's wicked and we know that he will discourage you if you don't know his tactics. Please inbox us. Check our website out www.lcori.net or hit me on Facebook Pastor Shirley Fletcher we want to be a part of your journey and if you have said that prayer welcome to the greatest the best family the family that love your back in every situation the family of the Lord is the best family you can ever be in one thing I know about God he fights for his children and he loves you in spite of what you're doing I must say to you listen to me nothing can separate you from the love of God nothing that you have done I don't care how terrible or what you did Nothing can and will ever separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And so we give God praise, we give Him glory, and we give Him honor this morning, because He is worthy of all our praises, worthy of all our glory. So Father, we thank you for every person that has been watching in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in their lives. Thank you, Father, for making a way where there seemed to be no way. Thank you, Lord, for opening doors, Lord God. Thank you for giving your children a new hope. Father, we just bless you and we just praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are sick, oh God, and Lord God, that is doubting and and feeling, God, that they're not going to be healed. Father, I thank you that their fate will be moved to another level. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that those, Lord God, that are having difficulties and trouble in their homes and wars, and Lord, I thank you, Father, that you will be their peace. Those that are struggling financially, God, you thank you, Lord, because you are a provider. You promise, Lord, that you'll provide according to your riches and glory. And so, Father, I thank you, God, because you are well able. And we just give you all the praise this morning. Bless your people, perfect the things that concern them now, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for even now, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much again for watching us. We are so grateful to God for this time. And we give him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Now, those of you on the here, I don't know what it is you might need from the Lord on this morning. But I want to know, I want you to know that our God is able to do anything. And whatever your request is on today, I want you to meet me at this altar. Because we always got to be going through things. And there are situations. And I don't want you to leave the same way that you came. I want you to know that Jesus is in the room. Yeah, he's in this room. He's in this space. Hallelujah. There's nothing that is impossible for our God to do. So meet us at this altar. We want to pray and touch and agree with you. No matter what your problem or your situation is. I know sometimes it's not easy. It's not easy. Because every time we feel like things are going good, then the next minute we write back down the ground zero. And we need to understand what we're dealing with. And so I want you guys, hallelujah, to understand that God has never failed. And he will never fail. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The altar worship should already been up here a long time praying and getting himself prepared. Hallelujah. Come on, meet us a new season. I don't want y'all to move like y'all on, like y'all, you know. Move, move expeditiously. Let's move. This is a, a serious season. Hallelujah. And so we bless the name of the Lord because God is so awesome. Hallelujah. It takes a lot for people to come to the altar. Hallelujah. Now come here praying, praying. I, listen, this is, uh, listen, people are in bondage and people are going through. People are uh, hurting. Hallelujah. And there's a lot that is going on. So we are so grateful and so thankful to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray for these wonderful people. God is doing some amazing things. He has not changed his mind. Hallelujah. I want to pray that you be strengthened and be encouraged. And know that God is going to do just what he said. Hallelujah. He is not a man that he should lie.